when people are seeking, most of them have read or understood from videos that there may be some kind of big bang or like huge experience or something happens. And here you go, you're awake, or here's the shift. <laughs> and when nothing happens, nothing really happens because it is, in truth, it's just a drop of a belief. And that belief drops without any saying, bye bye, I'm going now. <laughs> it's just something was believed and then it's not believed anymore. Hello again. Great Hello. to be with you, Sarah. Thank you. Well, it's it been has nice. been a while, yeah, about six weeks, maybe more. So I'm yeah. really curious to see how you're doing, what's going on with you. <laughs> From what I remember, um, when I last spoke to you, there were kind of uh, feelings arising, um, and I was kind of in a sort of a sort of stuck place with feelings almost. There was a lot of sadness and, and other things. Um, so I feel like I've moved through that. Um, yeah, and at the moment, I feel like I'm in a kind of strange place where, strange for me, where I sort of... Um, I'm feeling like I want to be more still and kind of um, just enjoy the peace and quiet. I've been traveling um, and coming back home's lovely. Um, my husband's just gone away on a ho holiday with a friend and uh, I love my husband very much, but um, I'm so happy to be on my own with my cat, just in the stillness and the calmness. Um, Yeah, so there's a sort of not, nothing feels like it's extremely urgent and extremely important um, at the moment. Um, and I don't know where I'm quite headed, which is very unusual for me because I sort of have planned out my my whole life I, I, I like to be in control and have order and um so there's I'm just sort of letting life flow in some ways um which feels a bit strange and I yes I don't I don't know what the future will hold um and as I say all these things I think gosh that's this is the sort of thing alone has been telling me is this is what life is <laughs> and yet it's sort of seems strange to me <laughs> so yeah this oh. is where I'm at oh that's beautiful thank you so much for sharing wow so looking back before we started these conversations what would you say that is the biggest change the biggest change well you have to remember back now but <laughs> <laughs> See what you notice. I think two things come to mind, and one is that at the time I I sort of uh, put myself forward to do these calls, um, I was really feverently seeking seeking this thing that I wasn't, um, and, and and felt was important to somehow see that there wasn't enough in the, in the, that something wasn't right that wasn't enough there wasn't things weren't good enough um i needed to to be awakened in order to be good enough in order to for life to be good enough in order i didn't really know what awakening was but somehow i i wanted that um, I, I think I thought it was, um, I think I thought it was like turning into Superman and you've got special powers and everyone loved you and admired you. Um, and yeah, and you could, 
and you could fly or something so not quite not not quite that that caricatured but somehow i thought it was it was something super special that i would gain um and um so so now there doesn't seem to be so much seeking i'm kind of more interested in the world there's not so much seeking i'm not i don't think i necessarily got awakened but i, I think i whatever i thought was awakened is not what i need now um I didn't turn into Superman. Um, and the the second thing is about the flow of life, which we spent quite a bit of time on. Um, and just appreciating the flow of life. It's come into summer uh, um, in the, the, the Scottish island I live on, and I noticed that the birds come to the feeders with the young birds and I love watching watching them open their mouths for the, the mothers who constantly have to feed them and the, the wild flowers are growing. I have um there there are nettles growing in my garden. We don't do anything with the garden, it just stays wild. So I love to see what arises. Um and there's a, a big patch of, of one type of nettles and there's different nettles. Um, and I just, I, yeah, I, I love all these wild plants that are just doing their own thing. Um, nature seems to just do its own thing around me. Um, and yeah, I notice sometimes my body doing its own thing. I'm walking and I'm not sort of saying walk 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 it's just happening uh starting to notice more flow within me more and more um and definitely see the flow outside of me just this this aliveness this flow this yeah so those are the two things i think the sort of not not so much feverant seeking and and appreciating the flow much more and being a, being a, more okay with with being part of that flow not having to control my little corner of the flow wow oh, that's great i'm so happy to hear that the seeking has played out or finished in a way that it gives give space and all this to flow and to just be participant in that flow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And this question of self, no self, what am I? Is that played out? Has it has it found the answer? That's an interesting one. Um I could never find a self. Um, every time I looked, um, what am I? It seems to be. I'm seeing more and more that I'm a process, and I'm at the point where I suppose I'm. Uh, that feels a bit strange. There's still a bit of kind of me somewhere there thinking, oh no, I need to, I need to organize this, I need to do that, I need to kind of there's there's maybe a bit of fear that um is is there lurking somewhere that is 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 linked to early life experiences and trauma that that feels that I need to keep safe. Um and and if I let go, somehow there'll be a disaster. This is this idea mm -hmm. that has a risk. So it's lurking in the background, and yet there's a way in which I can just see so much more of the flow, and I'm enjoying that flow, and it feels more relaxed. So 
I feel I'm still in the process, but something's shifted. Um, so if someone asked me, who are you? I would just kind of look at them and say, uh, oh, I, that's it. I don't know, but the answer feels more like a process at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next question. <laughs> How do you see free will and choice and decision making? How do you see now? What does it look like to you now? Oh, one, one second, Sarah. We lost okay. connection for a little bit. Okay, oh, okay. that again. <laughs> Free will and choice is cannot dictate how the internet functions. Not not here on my island. <laughs> um, despite my husband's best efforts, he's not able to control the internet. Um, so yeah. So I, I, I've just been reminded that, that my free will and choice is limited, if it exists at all, <laughs> certainly, certainly limited. Um, I, I've just been, been thinking about uh, what to do with some, some time off I, I, um, I have. Um, and I was going to do a walking trip with my mother, but, but that's been cancelled, so... That I just yesterday saw another opportunity to do something completely different, maybe cancel the walking trip. Um, and I've been sort of thinking about it, but in a sense, I've been relaxed because ultimately it doesn't really matter what choice I make. Um, it feels like whatever choice I make, it would be okay. Um, yeah. And, and there are so many factors around every choice, aren't there? So I'm already limited with what choice I make. Free will and choice, I can see how it's, how I have less free will than I thought I had um, because there are so many factors at play. And then there's the question of who, who am I anyway to have this free will? Um, and then what, what was always so important to me was that, that it all mattered so much. It mattered greatly, you know. These, these choices were almost life or death type thing. Um, and I can kind of see that, that these choices I have don't really matter so much ultimately in the grand scheme of things. Um, I was thinking, I was seeing yesterday that even if I died, it wouldn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. As opposed to me, to my, my idea of me being a thing, it would matter greatly. Um, or the idea of death matters greatly. Obviously, if, if that thing dies, it wouldn't, there'd be nothing there to, for it to matter to. Um, so I sort of see, see things from different perspectives at the moment yeah i think it's really nice that you say that whatever choice is made is okay it's, it's about it's that okay with with the many of the choices in my life yeah yeah my cat was sick actually recently and um she started vomiting blood and she was just vomiting every time she ate and we were so worried we took her to the doc the, the vet a few times um and the vet didn't really know what it was and suggested doing sort of 
a few invasive tests like taking blood from her neck but we weren't really sure that was a good idea if we didn't need to so um we we sort of all, all the tests that the vet did that weren't invasive came, came out to be sort of um not not finding anything um we monitored her water intake and we found it was fine so we didn't go for these these blood tests um and then I suddenly had a thought. Um, she started sort of snoring and sneezing. And then when I was away, my husband said she sort of, she kind of sort of sneezed up some some snot. It was a big kind of green bit of snot. And I suddenly had the idea that maybe, maybe she needed uh, um, antibiotics. I just had this sudden idea. And so I suggested to him and he contacted the vet and the vet said, yeah, why not, you know? So, so he gave her antibiotics. So every every day, twice a day, wasn't uh, she wasn't happy about. It. He said to grab her, and uh, and and he he got scratched a lot. So, um, but since since that she's had the antibiotics, she's been better. Um, yeah, but I got to a point where I thought through that process, there was only so much I could do. Um, and if if she died, she died. She'd have had a good life. We'd have done what we could for her. Um, so it was a kind of like a bit of a experience of letting go. And then she got better. Um, and so I, I think somehow the um, her kind of cold she had, which was also sort of a bacterial infection, had somehow caused her to wobble a lot. Um, which caused her to vomit and, and 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 the blood was sort of from her, her upper kind of digestive tract because it was quite uh red because she's she's got brain damage so um where she she wobbles anyway when she walks but if she's vomiting she wobbles even more um and maybe the wobble wound caused her vomiting it's it's hard to it's hard to know because I can't talk to her but uh, but I guess I like, kind of through that process, I sort of realized a bit, I can't know everything. I can't control everything. I can't, I can't sit on the internet for hours working out what was wrong with her. You know, that's a vet's job. I can't be a vet. So I kind of had to say, my husband started looking all these things up online and saying, it could be this, it could be that. And I said, you know, like, I'm not a vet. I don't want to know what it could be. We'll just do the best we can. Um, and I sort of started to realize that, yeah, I needed to let go more and not take such responsibility for knowing everything and solving everything and dealing with everything. And um, and then and then this this sudden idea about having antibiotics came, which was n none of which my husband had Googled. That wasn't one of the options. Um, and then now she seems better. So there's a sort of... Uh, a lesson about trusting life again, not taking so much responsibility and controlling life and trusting it more. And if 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 a loved one dies, then they die. I guess everyone dies and I'm going to die. And I kind of ultimately have tried to, I've spent my life trying to control life and death, which is bizarre, you mm -hmm. know. I've not only wanted to be Superman, I've wanted to be God or something. It's, uh, <laughs> it's quite unbelievable. Yeah. So maybe I thought awakening was turning into God. <laughs> and then people, God in a human form. <laughs> God in a human form, be able to control everything. I'll decide who lives and dies. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, really come to recognize my how i'm just a human animal and so are, so so are it's every animal and every human around me and, and plants and things things live and things die um yeah so there's at the moment i'm at a place where i'm 
I'm aware of that and I'm accepting that. And there's another part that's sort of fighting it a bit, the one that still wants to be in control, that experienced the trauma mm -hmm. that feels somehow that if it's not in control, there'll be a disaster. So there's these two parts that are kind of, or two thoughts really, I suppose. They're not parts, they're thoughts really, or groups of mm -hmm. thoughts. That's what they are. They're just... It's different groups of thoughts. <laughs> and you look at them like that. Thoughts are fighting with each other. <laughs> fighting with each other. That's yeah. Oh, I'm so I'm so happy to hear that your kitty is feeling better. Yes. That's, that's yes, good. I'm happy too. I really am. Yeah. Over these six weeks, I also had cat problems. You know, we have oh. a lot of cats. <laughs> but oh. one is so funny. I mean, it's just bizarre funny. Like it was one day I took two, two of our cats to the vet to clean their teeth. Because they have like gum problem. And, yeah. and the vet had to pull a few teeth out. For one cat, she took eight. For another little one, seven. And I'm a bit like distressed. Like, oh my God, how many, how many teeth do cats have? You know, <laughs> but it's not all of them. They have more. So anyway, I, I got home with the cats and they are out under anesthesia, so they have to get better. Um, I'm a bit distressed, but I think I go to the shop to buy them some food, some soft food. <laughs> and as I walk down the road and I turn to this another road, I see there is something on the ground. There are no people around, but I bend over and there is a fish like a piece, a chunk of frozen fish, and the one that I normally buy for the cats. <laughs> it's like, it's like life saying, don't worry, yeah, I have some fish, they're going to be okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like, how often do you find a frozen fish on the ground? Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, life is such a teacher. <laughs> really is so, like this. so in in the whole of this this stress there is a little bit of fun and magic <laughs> yeah. wow gosh wow funny huh? oh. yeah life is life really is a teacher it's uh, if if and I I'm listening more and more to its lessons. Mm. Yeah, life is life is my teacher. Um, yeah, and and yet I I can't not not have lessons. I can't say today I'm going to take a day off my lessons now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna go to school today. <laughs> I don't I don't get to decide. So again with free will, there's another thing about free will. I don't get to decide. But when I learn Yeah. I don't get to have a day off life. <laughs> Still take a day off life. <laughs> yes. Stop being for 24 hours, then come back online. Yeah. Yes. I'm always being okay. Yeah. And it's just, it's, uh, it just happens that I, that I'm being. Yeah. So it's a, it's a kind of, there's this, a sort of sense of, Coming to this point in my life and thinking, oh gosh, it's like I've taken off a set of glasses that 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 were I don't know somehow coloured, coloured purple or something. I take them off and I'm like, the world's not purple. I'm sure I thought the world was purple, but it was the glasses. But <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just, I'm sort of looking at things and I mean I kind of oh <laughs> I'm not used to the fact that the world isn't purple yet 
but it clearly isn't purple. Um, so it's a sort of a strange, strange place to be in, in some senses. Hmm. Hmm. I have another question. Do you remember at all? Do you remember when these glasses were taken off and when the view changed? Did anything happen? Or was so subtle? This is an interesting thing to that's a good to go back to and, and explore. Good question, because it's only through talking to you now that in a sense I realize the glasses have come off. Wasn't necessarily even fully aware that they've come off, and maybe I even put them on again sometimes. Um, it feels very gradual, it doesn't feel like there's one particular point in time, it feels very gradual, just little bits here and there, even yeah, e even as I, as I say some things like about my cat and so on. and that that I appreciate the learning that otherwise I was was much more tacit that wasn't so obvious. So it's it's it feels very gradual. Yeah. Great, because you know when 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 people are seeking, most of them have read or understood from videos that there may be some kind of big bang or a like huge experience or something happens and here you go you're awake or here's the shift <laughs> and, and when nothing happens nothing really happens because it is in truth it's just a drop of a belief and that belief drops without any saying bye bye i'm going now <laughs> it's just something was believed and then it's not believed anymore so you're saying that it was gradual and you don't even notice when that happened or if that happened kind of confirms that you know nothing needs to happen wow interesting yeah like you said when that happened or even if that happened but yeah there's not a kind of not so much i, I don't have a sense of needing anything to happen so anymore <laughs> but yeah I don't, <laughs> I don't know that anything did happen Yeah, just like it feels like now life is okay, I'll just live life. As if it's my choice, I can't not live life. <laughs> so I, I can't say, oh no, today I'm not going to live life. Maybe tomorrow. Um, yeah, yeah, I always thought with awakening that there, there would be a, a really big bang. Um, I wonder if somewhere down there I'm still thinking, oh, well, if I ever awaken, there'll surely be a big bang. <laughs> but now I just think, oh, well, I don't need that to happen to me <laughs> before I really wanted that to happen to me. I wanted to be Superman. <laughs> when Clark Kent turns into Superman, I can't remember if he turned around or something, but there was this dramatic change. Uh -huh. um, and so many of the stories of teachers out there it's this sudden dramatic change. They, yeah, they have a, a, a profound awakening experience, which I never knew what that really meant. And they didn't really describe it. It was just they described before and they described after. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No. No, I feel it. Yeah, I don't necessarily need to have that. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind flying though, like Superman. I'd like to be able to fly. That'd be quite good. <laughs> yeah, let's fly. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna flap or just like in a dream, lift up and ooh, <laughs> over. <laughs> if I never fly, it's not a problem. I can go in an airplane. Um, yeah, mm. it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? This kind of how some people say they 
they do just awaken and it's very gradual and some people don't even realize that they've awakened um and for other people there's yeah yeah it's a, it's a strange thing but like you say so it's a, it's a it's a, a it's a letting go of something did you say or a dropping a drop of a belief a drop, a drop of a belief okay like you believe something and then you looked at your actual experience and that belief no longer made sense so it fell away nothing happened <laughs> but you can okay yeah i'm interested in that actually i've been interested in that in the last last few weeks that beliefs and how they kind of shape people's perceptions of the world um so some people believe the earth is flat i'm not sure how that changes how they live day to day whether they go to the grocery store and buy different things because the earth is flat i don't know but um but some beliefs really really affect the way people see things i guess they're like these glasses aren't they mm -hmm. um yeah yeah and i've been interested in that and I guess one of my beliefs was what that the idea that I had to control life in order to be safe. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing more and more that not only is that not true, I don't have to control life in order to be safe, but I, I could never control life anyway. <laughs> I just thought I could. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really. I, went around really thinking I could control life um which is quite quite crazy yeah and then I think now as I sit here I think if I can't control life I guess I'm I've still got this programming that that's that's there thinking now what do i need to do now what should i do what should i do with my life what are my goals what am i so if i can't control life what's, what's gonna happen and i sort of think well i don't know because it's not up to me <laughs> so it's, so again there's this these set of thoughts that are like come on do something <laughs> and then there's this new set of thoughts that are I was thinking, well, I can't do anything. Things just happen. I didn't even know. Like, even like uh, wanting to do something happens. Like, where do you get your wantings from? Yes. You either want something or not, and that wanting arises. It's like you sit, you sit, and suddenly I want to go for a walk. Like, <laughs> that it? That happened. It's not like nothing happens unless I make it happen. I should try and experiment and just lie in bed and 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 see if nothing happens if I don't make it happen. You know, if I don't have this thought, I know I'm going to do this, but if it just happens. I can't imagine just lying in bed for a day. So I think things would just happen um yeah so much i see just happens actually i don't think now i'm going to brush my teeth but i find myself brushing my teeth <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like you say if things happen it's not as if not as if things stop yeah you can look at this if, if there is a wanting to go for holiday Right. There are many things to do before the holiday to make sure that it happens. Mm -hmm. Like, firstly, if you sit on the sofa and think, I want to go for holiday on that date, but you don't move your finger and nothing happens, you're still sitting and dreaming. But you need to do your research, buy tickets, arrange accommodation, arrange everything, pack your luggage, and go to the airport on time. I mean, all these steps, they need to happen for you to arrive 
to your destination. So it's not like we are passive and uh, we don't act in that way. But there is a preference, okay? I want to go for holiday. I prefer to go for holiday rather than sit on a sofa. And here you go. There are things to do. Plans to be made. It's all included. That's how it plays out. Yes. 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 That makes sense to me, absolutely. It's not like... It's not like... Um, nothing i just sit there and do nothing and then suddenly the holiday happens for me there's a process but it's uh to what extent i'm in control of that process and, and to what extent yeah through this i is the in control of it in control of it anyway it's an interesting one isn't it yeah yeah what, what I notice is that I, I'm enjoying more riding this wave rather than kind of trying to create the wave. Mm -hmm. Oh, the wave stays there. It just, it's, there's such an enjoyment in riding a wave. And then eventually the wave crashes and then a new wave comes up. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels more freeing. It feels much more relaxed to just to just not not have to take such responsibility for everything in life um and yeah yeah though obviously if i need if i want to go on holiday i have to book book flights so today i have to decide what i want to do now for august i have to decide what i want to do but yeah yeah, you get a direction. You have a preference. You you know what feels good to you. You kind of have that uh, inner GPS, like what feels yes. What you. feels yes, exactly, and that's what I'm thinking. It ultimately it doesn't matter. There's no wrong choice, and yet just kind of I'm waiting to kind of know what feels right. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes it's more about recognizing what you already want to do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And so, trying to come up with something. The answer. It's like it's, it's already yeah. here. That path yeah. is already laid. You already know. Yeah. Just recognizing that and honoring that, and making your steps that need to be taken for that to happen. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of in the early stages of learning that feels like learning to walk. Uh -huh. You know, when babies first, they sort of, they stand up and hold on to something, then they take a step and kind of fall down. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like, feels like learning to walk a bit. Yeah. 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 Feels quite strange, um, but there's also it's not, it's not like anything's different in some senses. Like it, maybe I took the glasses off. Sometimes I put them back on, but the world's still the same. It's just that the yeah. Sometimes it looks a bit more purple. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it's not like it changed changed into a different world um, yeah. right and you can also notice that this is just the beginning like you say learning to walk it's a beginning mm. that end of seeking is not end of life it's not end of exploring it's not end of ex adventures I see yeah. you frozen again. Am I frozen? No, I still see you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a beginning. It's an opening. There's so much to explore, many more <coughs> insights, many more realizations, many more 
things to see and yeah. all that healing has to happen and all this old stuff that is still there has to open up and get cleared and purified <laughs> and with that there is more relaxation into what you are in your own life in your own environment yeah that makes a lot of sense because i know i i notice there's still a lot of fear there around yeah yeah should i really let go maybe i should put these glasses back on um, <laughs> Yes. And you know, this letting go is not like you can do anything to let go. It's not like you can do anything to let go. But letting go is the other side of the same stick. Like on one stick is resistance and another is surrender. Like either there is resistance to what is happening, there is surrendering. It's not like you have to do something to let go. But when the resistance is not there, that's what I call flow. <laughs> yes, there's so much with me. It's all this efforting. There's mm -hmm. me efforting to not effort, <laughs> which is which is hilarious. Yes, yes. So that's these. That's the perspective from the glasses. I need to let go. I need to work hard at letting go. <laughs> Right, so how do you do? How do you let go? Well, it's not <laughs> like I chose any of this, really. Like I sort of planned it out. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so there's a kind of needing reminders of that, I guess, or, or um, yeah, reminders arising of that. Of, of the fact that I'm not in control because suddenly this kind of idea comes back. Yeah, I need to let go or I I need to do this or I need to do that. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been there all my life, this, I, these, this thought, this set of thoughts that they're not letting go that easily even yeah, the, these these thoughts aren't aren't necessarily the set thoughts are hanging around, even though they're not relevant. Which is it's a funny, it feels a bit strange. <laughs> it's a strange place to be in, I guess. I'll, I imagine that that it will become more normal over time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like we are used to identify with this character, with the body, with the mind, with the emotions, all the roles that are playing out. And then you see that you are not that. Yes, this is showing up. Yes. But you are not that. So whatever is showing up is okay. You're not doing any of it. Like you're not constructing this body every second. <laughs> or creating the images in the mind, they show up. So it's that distance from, from this identity with something into the space. Or nothingness or openness or just being that is always here. I'm not creating anything, it's all just showing up. It it hit me what you said, it really hit me that um I yeah, I don't create anything. Somehow these these glasses made me think that I created my body, I create my thoughts, I whoever I am, um, but everything just shows up. Wow, oh, yeah. Everything just shows up, which is, uh, feels strange, <laughs> very strange.
Yes. And a big part of it is not taking these thoughts so seriously or not believing thoughts. Yes, they show up, blah, 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 right? Am I going to get really onto that idea and start getting crazy or not? So there is always refuge into yourself, into, into beingness, into the peace. I see that sometimes I really do kind of get caught up in 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 thoughts and and identify with them. And yeah, <laughs> I can tell you something funny that happened with the cats again. Oh yeah, <laughs> another story. Like, um, I accidentally stepped on some old cat's tail and it bit me on the foot. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. And it was just a tiny, tiny little you know, one tooth hole that pierced my, in between my toes. And like one day it's okay. Second day I see the foot is swelling and getting more painful. And then, um, I thought I need to Google and see what's going on, what people say on internet about cat bite. So I go in there and I read all kinds of stories. <laughs> and then, and then I see my mind starting to create its own stories, like saying, okay, well, if that cat had rabies, then you have one month to live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And then it says, okay, it may it may get blue and swollen and infected, and you're gonna have to cut your foot off. But it's okay, you know. The my I can hear these thoughts like it's okay, you know. If you, you need to lose the leg, you need to lose the leg. It's fine. But you know, I see these thoughts, and it's just so hilarious. Like, <laughs> they are coming, but nobody believes them, and wow. it's just entertaining <laughs> but i could see them arising and telling me you know all the horrors of the world what can happen to me so yeah on the third day i made an appointment with the doctor got antibiotics and the foot was <laughs> back to normal in a couple of days <laughs> wow wow yeah gosh yeah That's it. this conversation has really um really inspired me to just yeah think of notice my thoughts that just arise they do just arise and yet they sort of sometimes it's like they're the truth <laughs> It must be the truth. It's not that they just arose as kind of opinions, crazy opinions as well. Um, well yeah. Yeah, it's uh, strange to think that these thoughts just arise and they're not me. And not me. <laughs> right. Consider when you are sleeping at night and you have a dream and uh, many things happening in a dream. Some characters, some emotions, some situations happening. And then you wake up. And would you say that you are that dream? You created it? Mm -hmm not that dream it's not no longer happening so i can't be that dream i didn't create it some of my dreams i think where, where did they come from i didn't create them hmm. so it's the mind that dreams them and shows the images and yeah. brings emotions into the play 
and sorry. And in the waking life, it's also the mind is still dreaming. It's creating yeah. all these scenarios and <laughs> filled with drama. And it's yeah. still dreaming. So Very in that dream, you know that it's not me. In a day, in a day dream, <laughs> somehow the mind is like, ah, I'm doing this. I'm thinking this. It's just dreaming awake, dreaming with the eyes open still dreaming but there is something here that knows the night dream knows the daydream knows of this experience here uh, which is not affected by any of it yeah yeah it's something consistent that I can't take a day off from. <laughs> like, yes, yes, I can get caught up in daydreams. Daydreams that feel like they're real, that pretend to be real. And they're just clusters of thoughts. Thoughts that, that support each other to create a story. Yeah, it's a storyline. In the end, you know, human experience, we can't live without stories. <laughs> we, there's a story going on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. My cat doesn't need a great story. She doesn't know how old she is. She doesn't, she doesn't know that she identifies as Scottish. She doesn't know that she, <laughs> she, she belongs to our family. She just, she just, does what she does mostly sleeps and gets up and wants food and wants affection and comes for cuddles and yeah but she doesn't have she doesn't sit and tell me all about her her stories <laughs> Amazing how many stories I have of myself that, yeah, that when I really look at them, how real are they? How real are they? And then, what, what am I left with if I drop the story? And then, yeah, I notice something down at the bottom here. Oh, the internet, the internet, the internet. <laughs> oh. I'm frozen? Connection is unstable. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're frozen. Yeah. Oh. The connection is okay. unstable. It is unstable. really too. reminds me. Yeah. It reminds me I'm not in control. Gosh, it's funny. Oh, it's been a reminder. Yeah. Every time the internet's unstable, hopefully I'll remember that I'm not in control. <laughs> but there's, yeah, there's this story, this story that I'm in control. It's a story. Mm -hmm. I've lived with this story for so long, this story that says I'm in control of my life. And it's a story. Wow. Well, and there is a freedom to live that story and see what it's like to experience life from this perspective. I'm interested in in different perspectives in my story, but I'm interested. I would like to talk to the local sheep and ask them what their story is, because there's, there are sheep that always come into my garden, and I go out and I look at the sheep, and and I think, why are you in my garden? And the sheep looks at me and thinks, 
why are you here? It doesn't, it's not, it's not my garden to the sheep, it's some land with grass. And, and I've disturbed this, this sheep. <laughs> I'm interested in that. There's different, different perspectives on life. Yeah. Hmm. So it's nice to know that this entertainment center upstairs can create all kinds of stories and they can be fun and if they are painful that means there's something to to look at to investigate maybe and resolve so it's useful it's useful Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be taken up so seriously. And it doesn't know. <laughs> it just doesn't know. Yes. Mm. Okay, Sarah, I want to thank you from all my heart for your willingness and bravery to participate and be open and allow everyone else to see your process and also big thanks from the viewers <laughs> that enjoyed watching our conversation and i see that you are on the right track <laughs> all is well things are settling in and they will continue to settle in and uh, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. So thank you. Thank you so much for this process. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. And I hope to see you around. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. That helps the channel to grow and for me it's important and I appreciate that and I want this message to reach as many people uh, as possible and if you find this useful and helpful please just share a link with a friend that helps and if you need assistance with your own inquiry please come to Liberation Unleashed Forum and apply for a guide our guides are doing this work for free we're just gonna give you questions that you need to answer by yourself and if you need my assistance my just send me an email one or two nights at the com and we can find some time to meet and explore together and thank you for watching and thank you have a wonderful day bye for now wonderful day bye for now